Hello everyone. We are back once again. We are going to answer some golf cart related questions hopefully today. Hopefully I can give you some good advice. Uh, I've got a few regularly scheduled questions and we might even talk to some uh, people in the live if they have any questions. Anybody watching in the live that uh, has a question feel free to ask. I'll, I'll get to you. Uh, I'll be checking periodically throughout this episode. This is episode 69. Uh, if you don't know who I am already, I'm sure you do. I'm Tim with Golf Cart Garage. I work for Golf Cart Garage. I am also a member of the Gearheads On Demand service that we offer at Golf Cart Garage, and I will talk a little more about that in the uh, later on in the video. In the meantime, while we are waiting for some, waiting for more live people to come to the chat, we'll go ahead and get started on the questions. The garage is now open, so let's get started with question number one. Says I have the 4x4 lift kit on a club car DS and the springs are too tight and it's like not having any suspension at all. The lift kit is imaginative, imaginative manufacturing. Well, I'm uh, I'm familiar with that lift kit. That imaginative manufacturing has been having that lift kit out for a long time. I've seen I used to see it years ago, and but I went and looked at it just to refresh my memory on what it comes with and and what they do. The completely replace your the the front end style of suspension on a club cart and they go with the coilovers in the front and then the rear looks like it's the same it looks like it's the, but it's definitely they it's a heavy duty leaf spring because i can count you can count the leaves it's like four leaves in that leaf spring and the stock leaf spring on a uh, normal club cart ds it's just one leaf so yeah that's I would imagine that that's a very stiff setup. Now, you could probably loosen up the rear just by replacing it back to a stock OEM spring, a single leaf spring, but I don't know what you're going to be able to do at the front. You might have to contact Imaginative Manufacturing to see if they have some type of softer coilover to go on that, that setup that they use in the front. But yeah, they, they did that on purpose. I mean, they made it that stiff because they had no idea what kind of, you know, it's a four wheel drive kit. So they know you're going to be out in the woods or you're going to be going to get the deer lease or something. So any, anything four wheel drive is most likely going to be pretty stiff. Number two, I had a problem with my golf cart. I did hook up my battery cable to reverse. I heard a pump sound and some burning smell. Hmm, oh, it's probably a pop sound there. Well, <laughs> that's not good. Uh, if you smelled something burning from hooking it up in reverse, what you probably smelled was diodes. And guess where a bunch of diodes are? They're inside your controller. Your controller is full of a bunch of diodes and diodes put off a smell when they when they blow up or, or degrade or they, they pop, uh, kind of like uh, rotten eggs, kind of smells like rotten eggs. So if uh, if that's what you smelled, that's most likely where it came from. Uh, it was the controller. But you can you can put your head down there sometimes, and you can even isolate where the smell is coming from. If it's, if it's from the controller area, to, and you, if it has a lid on it, take the lid off and smell it. You can probably smell it. It's probably stronger, right? if especially if it has a lid on it. That's what I would do. Number three, I have a 2012 EasyGo TXT with plug-and-play harness. I blew a 15 amp fuse and replaced it. Now my front turn. LED light stays on, but doesn't blink. I switch sides and the bulb works fine. Both rear blinkers work. Well, obviously whenever you blew that fuse, whatever you did to blow that fuse, I don't know if you blew that fuse because you hooked it up to an over voltage situation, if you blew that fuse because you, you touched something where it wasn't supposed to be touched, like a, a short circuit somewhere that blew that fuse, I don't know exactly what you did. But most likely when you blew that fuse, you blew something else in your front blinker area. Uh, could have blown something in the turn signal indicator uh, switch itself. Uh, something in there could have popped that's going to the front blinkers and didn't pop going to the rear. Number four, well, oh, let's go check. Uh, let's, we'll come back to number four. Let me check, make sure what we got. And YouTube, we got Ricky Smith. What's up, Ricky Smith? 
He says he has a Ricky Smith 2005 TXT PDS. The reverse buzzer didn't work when I bought it. I just replaced it and the buzzer works when the switch is switched to reverse even when the key switch is off. Is this right? No, that is not. Uh, well, let me think, Ricky. Hold on a second. That might be right. That might be right. Uh, I don't have a stock PDS behind me, or I could check that out for you real quick. But uh, that I'm not a, I'm not 100% sure, but that could be right. Uh, that it, that it, that the reverse buzzer sounds even with the key switch off if you put it in reverse. I don't know for a hundred percent, so you, you almost got me on that one. But uh, I'd have to go. My my PDS is a uh, in another building. I actually have a PDS, and then but I could test that on. But that's a good question. Let's see. Nothing on Facebook. No questions on Facebook. Maybe if somebody else out there in the chat has a PDS, they can test that real quick and see if that's normal for you while we're on this video. Because that's a pretty common car. Four. Okay. If I use the OBC bypass kit on my 2017 Club Car Precedent, can I still use my ERIC charger since it is still good? Okay, a couple of things wrong here with this question. Uh, must be some confusion somewhere. Because uh, Club Car quit using the OBC in 2014. So your 2017 Club Car does not have an OBC. So you don't have to worry about a bypass kit. You don't need an OBC bypass kit. Your ERIC charger is designed to be used on Club Cars without an OBC. So you don't you don't have an OBC in your car. So I'm not sure exactly what you were trying to accomplish there. If or was your car not charging or something like that, then if it isn't, then you have a problem either with your charger or your batteries. You, it's not your OBC. Number five. Does the negative cable have to route through the new OBC, or can it be routed around the OBC? Thanks in advance. it has to be routed through the OBC. But when you buy a new OBC, I think there's a cable already in there with, with ends already on it. You don't, you don't have to do it yourself. If you wanted to do it yourself, or if you have to, you're gonna have to just make your own cable, just put one end on it, put the wire through it, and then, then crimp the other end on it after you put it through there. But if I'm not mistaken, new OBC comes with a wire already through the hole with, with an end already on both ends. But yeah, it has to go through that hole. Yeah, the, the reason that it has to go through that hole is because the OBC is actually taking readings off of that wire. And those readings have directly related to charging your car, turning your charger on, and, and it, there's a lot of things that OBC is keeping track of, and it does it through that wire. It, it, like it does it, uh, you know how you can, there's some amp meters and volt meters that you can actually read voltage on a wire just by putting it close to it. Well, that's what that OBC is doing. It is getting proximity readings from that wire being that close and it has to be through that hole in order for it to be close enough for it to get those readings. That was number five. Ricky Smith says, thanks for everything you do to help us out. Not a problem, Ricky. Like I said, anybody out there with a PDS, put it in reverse without the key on and see if the reverse buzzer sounds because I'm not sure if that's normal or not. I think it's normal though. I'm trying to help Ricky out there. Let's see. That was number five. Go to number six. Tire spins when I try to loosen the front tire nut. Not enough weight. I've, I've been there many times in my shop. Uh, there's, there's only a couple of things you can do. You uh, either got to get somebody to sit on the car and have some more weight on that tire. So when you, when you, when you're pulling on the lug nut wrench, you know, you're not, you don't spin the tire because the front end of a golf car is, is actually pretty light. You know, the, the front end, especially of a gas car, front end is pretty light. Uh, the other thing you can do, I mean, this is, 
what any golf cart shop would tell you, it would be you just use an impact wrench. You know, you can have an air impact wrench, and nowadays you can get a cordless impact wrench. I mean, that's the greatest thing in the world, it's a cordless impact wrench. I carry one around in the back of my truck in case I ever have a flat. I'm, I'm not even going to worry with that lug wrench anymore. It's now that I've got my cordless impact wrench. But a cordless impact wrench, would brrr, it'd take that thing off easy, you know, even if, even if it didn't have enough weight on it. Number seven. Let's see. Battery indicator light goes on and off when cart in use. We store our cart at the course and live in very cold winter conditions. Bought new batteries for our 98 Club car in July. Recently noticed the light goes off and on, and by the time we finish the 18th hole, the cart runs very slowly. Fearful the batteries won't stay charged or the OBC isn't functioning correctly, or maybe the motor is weak. Well, it's very, it's very, I'll tell you this, it's very unlikely it's the motor. It's more likely, the most likely scenario in what you're describing is you have low voltage. I mean, that, that light comes on. One of the conditions that cause that light to come on and blink is the low voltage condition. And the fact that you say after 18 holes, the car's running very slowly, that even makes me think you've got a low voltage condition. So your batteries need to be tested. You, uh, you either need to have a golf cart shop do a load test on your entire pack. And if they have a discharge tester, that's a machine that will do a, whole, will do a load test on the whole pack at once. And based on the results of that test, that test counts down in minutes. Based on how many minutes your pack can, can uh, hold that discharge machine going, it, a timer goes off on the discharge machine. Based on how many minutes it takes for your batteries to get into an unsafe condition, then the, then the discharge machine will shut off. They can give you a really good idea of how good your battery pack is as a whole. And if you have one bad battery dropping out that's causing this thing, they can also spot it using that discharge machine. makes it a lot easier to spot a bad battery during the test. Now, that's if you didn't want to do this yourself. You, you know, during the, the time when your golf cart is... Uh, going slower when it's when it's starting to slow down and you feel it slow after 18 holes if you want to take your uh if you want to take your voltmeter and start looking for a battery that's good that's going down that's dropping in voltage you could do it then you know just clip it to your batteries while your golf cart's weak clip it to one battery at a time and drive the golf cart and hold and hold your voltmeter in your seat and watch the voltage as you drive you should see one battery dropping lower than any of the other ones because very, very unlikely that, well, it's almost impossible for all of them to go dead at once. There's going to be one that goes dead first, one, one that, uh, you know, runs out of juice first before the other ones. So, and depending on how old your batteries are, or, you know, they, you can make a decision, should I buy new batteries or should I just replace that one? If they're only like a year, if your battery set's only like a year old or less, then you could probably just replace that one bad one and, and you'd be fine. But if they're, if you're over three and a half years old and you replace one battery, you're going to end up you're going to end up regretting it because you're going to have mismatched years in your battery pack by the time you get through. Okay. I think we're on number eight. Let me see over here. Anybody questions on Facebook? Nope. Don't have anybody questioning anything on Facebook. So let me look at number eight. I have a Yamaha Electric 2013 with batteries that are about 18 months old. I recently started running jerky going forward or reverse. Press accelerator and it goes fast slash slow with uneven acceleration up to a near regular speed, not quite normal. It has run great up until this started about a week ago. What that sounds like is in, in a Yamaha, it's called a throttle position sensor. It's basically the, the, uh, it's the potentiometer or the rheostat or the device that sends the signal to the controller that tells the controller where your foot's at. Like, you know, you, your, your foot on the, on the accelerator pedal. As you push the accelerator pedal, you're pushing it into different positions. And the further you go, the faster the car's supposed to go. You know, in a gas car, all you're doing is you're, while you're doing that, you're actually pulling the butterfly on the carburetor open and it's squirting more gas so the car knows to go faster. Now, on an electric car, it's all done with electricity and signals. So wherever your foot's at, the, there's got to be a device that sends that signal to the controller that tells the controller where your foot's at. Well, 
that device can go haywire and send mixed signals. And when it starts sending mixed signals to the controller, the controller spits out mixed signals to the motor and your car jerks and does all kinds of crazy stuff. So that's what it sounds like. It's, it's, I, I know I've talked about in club car, this, I've answered this question and the device is called an M core in club car or a V glide in club car. Well, in Yamaha it's called a throttle position sensor. So that's what it sounds like. That was number eight. Let me just check. Uh, let's see. Ricky Smith says, sorry, I forgot to also ask. The read switch has been bypassed. Is that a big deal? Should it be replaced? Well, that's a good question. It's up to you. If the read switch has been bypassed, that what that, I mean, you know what that means, right? That means that your car can be on charge now. Like you got your charger plugged in and a little kid can come walk through your garage or wherever your car is at. They can just say, oh, a golf cart. They get on it and they'll turn the key on and hit that gas pedal and they'll take off and your cart will take off. That's with the reed switch bypass. The, that's, the reed switch is just a safety device to where when the charger's plugged in, it will not take off. So if that's not a problem for you, then it's not gonna hurt a thing. But if you have any chance of children uh, getting in your car and touching the key and the accelerator pedal, I'd replace the reed switch because you might end up with a damaged garage or a dent in your BMW or something, you know. <laughs> okay. Number nine. Just purchased two new Rocks tires from you guys to replace the front tires on my club car. The current tires were worn slash wearing unevenly like a car with a bad alignment. My cart has a lift kit. Is there a way to adjust the steering slash suspension to correct this uneven wear? Let me know what you think and if you need more information. Well, the, the answer is going to depend on the lift kit itself. Like uh, some of the more high-end lift kits, they don't, they, they allow for uh, I've talked about this before. They allow for uh, not only toe in and toe out, which all lift kits are going to allow toe in and toe out because that's your tie rods is what does that. But some of the higher end lift kits, they offer camber and caster adjustment. Not all lift kits do. So if yours is a lift kit that does not have camber and caster adjustment, then the only thing you can do is to make sure that your toe in is correct, your toe in and toe out. And the correct uh, toe in for a golf cart is one eighth inch toe in, which is very, very slight. It's almost zero. Like set your tires to zero, you know, zero toe in. So in other words, take a measurement from the rear of the tires and then take a measurement from the front of the tires and make sure it's the exact same measurement. Then you'll know both tires are pointing straight. Uh, they're not, they're not going in or out. Don't worry about centering. You know, this is, this is another uh, thing I tell people. Maybe I should save that for a tip when you're doing a front end alignment. But anyway, one eighth inch toe in is a correct toe in. So if you do not have camber and caster adjustment, that's all you can do. Okay. Thank you, Ricky. Appreciate you being here, man. Number 10. I have a 2012 EasyGo TXT that has no rear shock absorbers. The rear tires seem to ride rough. I was wondering if installation of shocks would give it a smoother ride. Any advice you can give would be greatly appreciated. Why does it have no rear shock absorbers would be my answer. And I, could, I can only speculate that the reason it does is because someone said this thing rides rough, so I'm going to take the shocks off and see if that makes a difference. And I bet they quickly found out that it did not make a difference because on an, e on an easy go, the way that the, the suspension is in the rear, the shocks, they just, they're not holding the car up. They're not stopping anything from, they're just there to dampen the blow. Like if you hit a really big bump, the shock will maybe help a little bit to dampen the blow. But the weight of the car is being held up by the leaf springs in the rear. 
So if your car is really, really rough in the rear, it's, it's your leaf springs that are, that are actually doing it. Shocks don't really do too much on a golf car. They serve a purpose, but it's not, they don't, they don't serve, I'm talking about on an easy go and with rear shocks. So someone must have experimented and we're trying to, to experiment with that one and took the rear shocks off to see if it would make a difference. Count the leaves, the leaves on your leaf springs. If you've got more than two leaves, then you've got heavy duty leaf springs on there and those are pretty stiff. And there's not, not much you can do about that except for just your tire pressure. Uh, you, if you do have heavy duty leaf springs, if you, if you don't need them, you could go back to the two leaf spring and they're a little bit softer, you know, and maybe that could help out some too. But air pressure and normal leaf springs is about the only thing you can do. Let's see. That looks like it's about it. Let's see, don't forget I'm a member of the, I'll talk about, tell what the gearheads on demand service is that we offer at Golf Cart Garage. That is, if you're interested in this service, by the way, it's, there's a link in the description, you can click on that. That will bring you to the scheduling page where you can actually schedule a phone call with, my, with myself or one of the other technicians at Golf Cart Garage. And you can talk with me one-on-one -on -one with about your golf cart related issue, whatever it may be. I may have seen it before. I may be able to steer you in the right direction, may be able to save you some money on that, may be able to help you repair it. Uh, you can schedule, when you click on the link, it will bring you to the scheduling page and to show all the time slots that are available. You can just pick one, if one that's convenient for you and I get notified automatically. It's all automatic, it's pretty cool. And I'll call you at that, at whatever time you selected. If you wanted to do a video session where I can actually see something, if I need to see something like a Zoom call or something, what I'll do is I'll send a link to your phone and all you do is you click the link and then I can see through your camera on your phone and I can see your golf cart. It's, that's not always needed, but it may be. You know, it helps sometimes. That uh, It helps me figure things out. So if, like I said, if you're interested in that, click the link in the description. If you like this comment, if you like this content, then please like this uh episode uh subscribe and com and comment in the in the in the chat uh that all helps all right let me check one more time for, for facebook and youtube and then we'll get to the tip for this week or for this episode looks like we're clear all right today's tip i have heard over the years about batteries blowing up got electric golf it never happened to me it never happened to me but it has happened. I know people that it has happened to. Their golf cart batteries blew up. There's even been cases of golf carts where it blew up in the garage and burnt the house down. I don't know what those people did wrong. I don't, I don't have any idea. Well, I have some ideas, but I don't know what the, the, I don't know what the definitive proof was of what actually caused things like that to happen. But that being said, Today's tip is anytime you've got the seat open and you're looking over the top of your batteries, you're working on that golf cart, wear eye protection. Just think how drastically catastrophic it could be if you didn't have eye protection and something like that happened while you're looking over the top of your batteries. Now, I'm guilty of doing that over the years millions of times, but don't do that. Don't do like me. Do what I say, not what I do. Uh, wear eye protection when you're working on, above, or around batteries, or around your golf cart batteries, especially lead acid batteries. Anyway, that's this week's tip. Let's see. Nobody questioning anything on Facebook. Ricky Smith's the only one we had over there on YouTube. I want to thank you, Ricky, for coming and showing up, man. That's cool. And that's going to be it for me. I will be back on uh, Thursday. Uh, remember, Tim, Tuesday, Thursday. If you comment, like, and subscribe, you'll get notified. So you don't even have to remember that. So remember to do that. All right. We'll see you all Thursday. Garage is now closed.